Hey everyone, how's it going? It's JDOSX here and welcome to episode 8 of Minitup Monday where today I'm going to show you guys how to create animated sequence files in 3ds Max. So what's an animated sequencing file? Well basically it's just a screen cap of what your viewport sees over a, t a period of time. Why is this really good? Well it's always a good idea to check your animations and the way your scene looks before you do a final render because obviously rendering takes a long time and if you notice a problem in there then you're going to have a bad day. But as it can be in many scenes, you can end up with a certain complexity where things actually don't work properly in real time. Uh, this is a test scene I'm doing here and it uses a lot of path to form operations because it has a quite a bit of cabling in it in some of the hydraulics which you'll see in a second. So as a result, when I go to scrub my timeline, it lags like a crazy amount and you just can't preview it at all. So basically you can imagine animated sequencing files as a screen cap of everything and it just renders out each frame from the viewport one by one then saves it into a nice video for you. And it looks pretty cool, works pretty well and gives you a great idea of what it's going to look like before you waste all that time rendering. So it's pretty easy to set up. I'm just going to go back to where I wanted it from. The first thing you have to do is pick the viewport or the camera which you want to take your your render from and it's a good idea to make it the same as what your actual final render is going to be. Then after that you just have to go into tools, go to views, grab viewport and create animated sequencing file. This uh, option above here is the same thing but we'll just create a still image. Here we go, so we'll just go to there and then the first thing you're going to want to do is to create, is to pick your your time range that you want to view this render preview from. So I've already filled it in, I'm going to go from thre frame 350 to frame 900. Over to the right, this gives you the options of what uh, bits in your scene that you're going to see in your render preview. Um, as you can see, you can uh, turn on things such as cameras, so you see all the, the cameras in your, your render preview, but I don't really need that, so I'm just going to leave that as is. Um, you also have options of decreasing the frame rate or rendering every second or third frame. I want to get the full experience so I'm just going to leave that as is. Also here's a good one, um, image size percentage of output. So this basically determines how big your render preview will be in comparison to your final render. I'm going to leave this at 50% to show you guys sort of how it works but it actually really that's overkill. You can probably get away with 25% or so of your final render size. Um, after that it's also worth noting when you go into the visual style area this uses the nitrous rendering system the same as the viewports so you can pick from any of your realistic uh, viewing uh, modes here or you can go for any of the stylized ones such as ink and acrylic I'm gonna leave it on realistic because that's what I need after that you have to pick what sort of output you like um, it'll default to using an AVI file you can choose a custom file but I, I don't like, like I said for me I don't really need that and then you can just go to choose the codec I found that these sort of suck, kind of. So I usually just go uncompressed, which will give you a sort of a fairly large file in the end, but it gives you full quality in each frame, and you're going to delete this file later anyway, so it really doesn't matter. So then after that, all we have to do is click Create to create the animated sequencing file. We're going to skip to the end, so you can see what it looks like. Welcome back everybody. As you can see my animated sequencing file has finished generating and has been saved. Now what would normally happen is as soon as it finishes Windows Media Player would pop up and it would play your video through for you. However I missed the opportunity to record that so I'm instead going to show you guys how to view your animated sequencing file after you've closed it. So what I've got here is it's been saved but right now it's not open at all so the way you can just view it is you can go into Tools, Views, Grab Viewport and then go to View Animated Sequence File. Just click that and it'll pop up in your media player and it'll start to play automatically. Here we go and as you can see this is just exactly what it would have looked like in the actual viewport itself but it has been rendered out and saved so I can view it nice and crisply and in real time which is really important so I can check out all my animations and see how it goes before I render. So thank you very much for watching I hope this has helped you and I hope you've learned something.